and welcome to Fabula Living with Angela Jones. I'm your host, Angela Jones. So happy to be here today. It's not a great day weather-wise here in D.C., but it's sunny in here. <laughs> We're going to have a great day today. I have a very exciting show. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. You'll see what I have in store for that, but I'm so excited uh, to be here, and uh, we're already in June, people. This is the first Sunday in June. I cannot believe that we're at the halfway point for the year already. Time is really flying by. A couple of weeks, it'll be summer, and the next thing you know, we'll be talking, we'll be having a Christmas show. <laughs> Seriously, you all think I'm exaggerating, but it's true. It goes by so fast. Time is really flying by. But today, um, I'm very happy today. Um, it's been a very lovely week as I have been spending the week with my parents, and they are here in the studio for the first time, my parents, John and Roxy Jones. Let's clap it up for my parents. Woo! Daddy, you didn't clap for yourself. Clap, Daddy. Yeah, you're, all, you're part of the audience. That was a weak clap, Daddy. That was for you. <laughs> my parents are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, and that is definitely something to be celebrated because people don't stay married 50 minutes anymore, me included. So <laughs> just saying, being honest here. Um, so that is definitely a very momentous occasion to celebrate 50 years of doing life together. So very happy to have you all here. Very happy to have my parents here. I'm very excited. So we've been having a lot of fun, doing a lot of celebrating. Their anniversary is actually on Friday. So this week um, has definitely been about celebrating and gathering, you know, my brothers and their children. And my son came up yesterday for the day. So it's just been really nice to have the family together and to break bread together and laugh and create new memories. I tell people all the time that at this stage in my life, I'm really trying to create memories. I don't really need anything, and if I want something or need it, I'll kind of get it myself. I'm really just about just trying to create memories and celebrating life with people. So that's what we've been doing all week long, but we have been eating and getting it in as far as like all of that too. So that is kind of what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be talking about, since my parents are here and they hail from um, Montgomery, Alabama. So deep South people, deep, deep South. So today's show, since it's Sunday, they're Southern. So the theme of today's show is going to be Southern Sunday Supper. And then we're going to kind of do a little bit of gracious entertaining and things like that at the end. Um, we're going to have a little chat about that too, with a very special guest. So have something to look forward to at the end of the show. So really excited about that. Sunday is a big deal. Um, it's a nice way because you're starting your week off. You know, you kind of had a couple of days of R, two days of R&R, &R, and and you are about to kind of start off your work week. And in uh, most families, I mean, that's really the only time that you really sit down and break bread is probably on Sundays because that's really when you have time to really sit down and kind of come together and put together a really nice meal. I'll be honest, sometimes I didn't always get a chance to do that <laughs> with my son. It's normally I was just trying to get him something to eat and he was going back to his room making, you know, doing his homework and I was in the kitchen trying to clean up and I'm just kind of standing in the kitchen eating as, <laughs> as I was cleaning up the kitchen. But Sundays are really important in our home. Sunday was a big deal because there was church and then we knew we were going to, you know, have a nice big Sunday dinner. Now, I will say this. My mother, all we sat down together every night, which is kind of different because we don't really do that in my generation um, very often. I know there are people out there that do it, but I'm just saying now it's not as commonplace for everyone to sit down and gather, where, whereas it was when I was a youngster in the 70s. So... It was a big deal. My mom was a homemaker, and she always made sure that there was a really delicious meal on the table every night. And then on Sunday, she really kind of went all out and made a really big meal. She um, made sure that we had a really nice Sunday dinner, and she would get up either on Saturday, on Sunday mornings early before church. And sometimes, Mom, you did it on Saturday night sometimes? She prepped. She prepped. She was very clear on that. I didn't cook. She prepped on Sunday, Saturday night so that she would be prepared for Sunday morning. And she would do all of this 
before getting three kids ready for church, and then she had to go and play at church. So, ladies, gents too, we don't have any excuse because she did all that and made it happen. So I'm just saying, she made it happen. But today, um, we don't get a chance to really do that. And that's definitely something I think I would like to kind of go back to. So kind of this month in the month of June, I'm kind of going to be focusing on Sunday meals, quick Sunday suppers, quick Sunday dinners, even whether it's like something to do during the week or whether it's something that you can just easily kind of pull together. But I think that's something that I would love to see us get back to. I think I talked about that um, for the first show, um, that, that that would just be something great to get back to and to do. So definitely think that's going to be something that's going to be a theme. I want to think about that throughout the month. But I think that's something I would definitely like to make a part of um, – June. And then think about it. And June is kicking off summer. Summer will be, I think summer is June 22nd, I believe. And think about it. Over the summer, you are gathering more and doing more things where you're entertaining and getting together with people and things like that. So I think that this is a good time to do that. Speaking of June, in addition to summer, uh, June is also Black Music Month. So I want to tell you because I know that the show will kind of go on in case I don't get a chance because you know I always run out of time and I do that whole freak out thing at the end where I'm like, oh my God, I'm out of time. So let me tell you right now at the top of the show that I'm going to be highlighting some musicians in the month of June. So just to give you a little teaser, we're going to have live performances here in the studio. I am so super psyched about that because I haven't done that. But um, next week we are going to uh, have Clifton Ross the Third. And if you're not familiar with Clifton Ross, Clifton Ross was one of the finalists in BET Sunday Best, which is uh, BET's version of like American Idol, but it's a gospel music competition. So next week we're going to be focusing on um, gospel music and Clifton is going to be here and I'm going to interview him. And then he's also going to perform a song or two for us, too. So definitely look up Clifton Ross if you're not familiar with his music. But he's a wonderful psalmist. He um, matriculated right across the street at Howard University. And he was the, the musical director for the gospel choir. So very, very good. Uh, uh, a, a wonderful singer and has really great history with a really a lot of different um, gospel music artists. And actually, he just performed over the weekend. I'm going to talk about this with him next week, but he just performed with Will I Am, uh, for, formerly of the Black Eyed Peas. So that's kind of a big deal. So at the Kennedy Center, so it was a big deal. So I'm super, super, super excited to talk with him next week. So we're going to be doing some things with music this month too. And I wanted to do that this Sunday, but with my parents in town, I thought that's, this would be the great a great way to kind of do the Southern Sunday thing first, and then we'll talk, we'll do um, music for the rest of the month. In some way, shape, or form, we're going to incorporate music, no matter what topic I'm talking about. We're going to weave music in, because music is really important. Um, just in life in general, I think I love music. And I also love the fact that with music, for me, it's a big part of my upbringing. My mother is a musician. She's a pianist and an organist, um, and she's been playing since she was like 10. And my dad is a really big music buff, particularly jazz and blues. We don't get along on the blues thing. I don't like the blues. The blues are depressing. <laughs> he loves them, though. But he's not depressed. He's not a sad person. He just likes that music. He thinks it's soulful and it tells a story. And it does. I just don't like it. But... I do like jazz. We do have jazz in common. I love jazz music. So that was also a big part of my household was music. Just, you know, we would get up Sunday, Saturday mornings, and we knew it was time to clean. So that meant, meant that we were going to have music going too. And, you know, my father would play upbeat music to kind of, you know, get us in the cleaning spirit. So we had music on all the time. So music is a very big, important, a very big um, and very important part of my life. I love music. I sing. Um, I tried to play a couple of instruments. Wasn't good at that. So that's not my gift. But <laughs> so, yeah, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing this month as far as um, music and food. And we're going to kind of 
incorporate all of that because that's the beauty of having a lifestyle show is that we can talk about a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I'm excited about that. So now that you know what today's show is about, what's coming up in June, we're going to take a very quick break and then we're going to get right into this uh, delicious Southern Sunday supper. Be right back. And if you can't find it locally, 
you can um, order it online at Amazon or on, on Walmart.com so that you can have it delivered to you. But this is what you need to have. So white lily flower. The other, the second ingredient we're going to use is European, salted European butter. European butter is higher in fat content than regular butter. So we definitely want to use that because that's going to make the biscuits extra delicious because they're going to have more fat in it. But I didn't know. So Kerrygold is a great brand of butter. So, and this, uh, this is Irish butter. So any kind of brand of European butter that you can find at your local grocer, you want to have that in the, um, and of course regular butter works fine. But I'm just finding that since I've been testing different biscuit recipes that the European butter it seems to be my favorite. And that's what I've been sticking to. So European butter. And then we have buttermilk. Buttermilk is so much better than using um, regular milk or even um, cream even. So, again, because of the fat content. So, there we have it. Those are the three ingredients that we're gonna need. So, so far, I've already placed two cups of self-rising flour in here. And the reason why this can be three ingredients is because we're using self-rising flour. Hence, we don't need the baking powder or the salt or uh, baking soda in the, in the um, batter, in the dough. So I already have two cups, self-rising flour in the, in the bowl. And then we're gonna do uh, a quarter of a cup of the butter. I'm going to place that right into, okay, get it all out of there. All right. It's nice and it's temperature. And then we're going to do three quarters of a cup of the um, buttermilk. Now we may want to add more. But for now, we're going to start off. We actually may start off with a little bit less because so, we'll play around with it and see what we need. So, and that's it, folks. I mean, that's it. No rolling, no kneading necessary, which is great. So, I definitely need some more. Drizzle some more of the milk in there. So you're just gonna go ahead and use all of it. Why not? I love biscuits. Biscuits are so good. As you all have probably already remember, I am a bread junkie. My dad just told me over the weekend that I am like a, a bread addict, and I agree. <laughs> I think I do have a problem. I do love bread. We're gonna add a little more milk. So I'm just gonna grab some more buttermilk. I'm just gonna add a little bit more because we really want this dough to be a little bit wetter than that. There, that should do it. And just wanna keep mixing it there. Now, there, that's perfect. And if you wanted to, just a quick tip, really, you know when you go to um, Red Lobster, those biscuits that they have, that's all they are, a drop biscuit. So they've added cheese and garlic and, and parsley too. It, this is just the base of the biscuit. It's just, um, it's a drop biscuit. It's just a plain drop biscuit that they've added all those things too. Now at this point, if you wanted to add cheese, you could. You could add ham, bacon, scallions, jalapenos and cheddar, anything you wanted to add to the mixture you could at this point. So, there we have it. So now, we're just gonna start, we're gonna start dropping. So you're gonna just take a spoon, or you can actually just use um, an ice cream scoop if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use a spoon and just, here you are, form them onto rounded helpings onto the pan. That's all we're doing there. And if you want to double this recipe, this recipe is gonna make about, um, about 10 to 12 biscuits. 
Yeah. And biscuits, as you know, are great for breakfast, but you can also um, have them, of course, at any other time. Dinner, they're great to go with just like a bowl of soup or just a salad. I love biscuits. And this is already a, this is a, I failed to mention that this is already a greased pan. So it's already, it's already ready to go and then we can plop it right into the oven. So I'm not making these very big, so we may get a little more, we may get a few more than, yeah, we may get a few more than 12, because I'm not making them really big. So of course, you can definitely roll out the biscuits and do it the traditional way. And I'm gonna share a recipe for that too. Um, but if you want something quick and you still wanna be able to have biscuits, this is the way to go. Drop biscuits are the bomb. They are great. Because you can make them in a matter of minutes. I mean, don't get me wrong, biscuits really don't take very long unless you're, um, unless you have yeast in them or something like that and you want them to um they may take a little bit longer but typically biscuits are pretty quick you can really get biscuits on the table really fast so honestly there's no reason to have store-bought biscuits there's no need to pop a can when you can easily whip them up in a matter of minutes yourself you really can so there we have it so we have our drop biscuits so I'm going to um, put these in the oven and you'll see the finished result. But I, first of all, before I, want, I do that, let me, this here, I want to tell you a little bit about what I have today. We have a little spread going on here. So, the main dish today is smothered chicken. Very Southern. Very, very, very Southern. So, what I did was, I'm gonna kinda walk you through this process. This is the smothered chicken. Amen and hallelujah. That's some good one right there. So let me tell you about this uh, smothered chicken. I follow uh, a blogger named Angela Davis, and um, her blog is called The Kitchenista Diaries. It's my hope one day to get her on the show because she's local, she's in the area. So anybody knows Angela Davis, tell her that your girl is looking for her. She wants to have her on the show, but I think I'm gonna, I follow her on Instagram, so I think that I'm going to DM her or find out her contact information from her profile and try to get in touch with her because I would love to have her on the show. But she does a she does a smothered turkey wing dish. But I know that I don't eat turkey wings. My dad is in town, he doesn't eat turkey wings. My son Darius behind the camera, hello Darius, doesn't eat turkey wings. So I thought I'll just do chicken instead because everybody in our family eats chicken. So what I did was I did boned, bone in chicken um, thighs. And what I did was I took a long roasting pan and I put it over the burner of the stove and I put butter in the pan and I seared the chicken because I wanted it to get like the really good sear marks on it and to kind of get brown some already. I seared the chicken first, took it out of the pan and then I sauteed some onions and oh, let me rewind. Let me tell you how I seasoned the chicken. I just seasoned the chicken simply with just um, kosher salt, pepper, garlic powder, smoked paprika. That's it. Then I rub the chicken in olive oil so all the seasonings would really kind of get, you know, um, really kind of buried into the meat of the chicken. Then I seared it. Then after I, it was seared on both sides, so it was a nice golden brown, then I took it out of the pan. Then I put um, some sliced white onions in the pan, and I kept all the drippings from the pan because that's where all the goodness is, and that's gonna start the base for our roux. So what I did was I placed the onions in the pan along with some red pepper flakes, some um, chopped fresh garlic, um, 
And that's about it because everything else was already seasoned in the pan. So I let the onions get nice and tenderized. I added six cups of chicken stock and then in a little bit of flour. And then I just started to form the roux. And I can't tell you how much flour I used to be honest with you. I'll have to play around with that and, and measure it out perfectly. But I did use um, enough flour just to kind of get it started so that it would get the basis for a roux which is the basic, the basis for my gravy. So it made a delicious, rich, dark gravy. Put the chicken back in the pan, let it all simmer and get covered, and then I covered it with some foil, and I placed the chicken in the oven for two hours, one hour on each side. Um, I flipped it, obviously, and then continued to let it cook and roast until it is literally so juicy and falling off the bone. So. Let me grab another spoon here because I want you all to see just how, look how dark and delicious that gravy is. I mean, it's amazing. So it is, it smells amazing. I can't wait for everybody to dig in. So after today's show, like I said, my parents have been here celebrating their anniversary. So we're having some friends and family over so that we can celebrate um, continue celebrating their anniversary and just simply to have good old fashioned Southern Sunday supper. So that is how the gravy all came out for the chicken. So what I'm going to do to add a little freshness because sometimes gravy can be a little heavy. This is probably, this is not really very Southern, but I'm gonna take some parsley and sprinkle some parsley over the chicken. And then I'm also going to grate a little bit, of, put a little z lemon zest over top of it too, just to kind of give it a little brightness to the chicken, just so that it's not so heavy. Cause you know, gravy can be really heavy. So we just wanna, and when you're grating um, a fruit, you don't wanna grate it all the way to the white meat of the fruit, because then you, it's gonna be bitter. So just, just enough, you know, like right now, I'm probably gonna hit that spot maybe a little bit longer, and that's gonna be it. Then, whoop, and then we're gonna take that zest and sprinkle that over the chicken too. That's gonna be really yummy. So that's kind of like my little take on Smothered, smothered chicken. And of course, I already have a pot of rice going to accompany the chicken. So, because you can't have smothered chicken and not have rice. You gotta have rice. That's a big, that's a very Southern thing too. Some people may have mashed potatoes or something like that, but gotta have rice. So we're gonna have that to go with the, um, this is gonna be our main course. And then we're gonna fill it out with some fried chicken too, but that's gonna be our main course. And another dish, that I wanted to share with you all is corn souffle. Corn souffle is so incredibly yummy. Um, it is kind of sweet, so it's almost like it's a dessert almost, but it's very custardy and light and fluffy. Um, it's really good. It's really good. But so let me tell you what I did that I made to make this a little different. Instead of keeping the whole the corn the kernels whole, I um, mixed all of the ingredients together, and it's basically corn, sugar, a pinch of salt, and heavy cream. That's it. That's all that I placed, and a little bit of vanilla. You can either use vanilla bean if you want, or you can use vanilla extract. Those are the only things. Again, Sunday supper, but it's gonna be. Kind of a little more simple than what our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers went through. I mean, it was very laborious. So I'm kind of doing Sunday supper with a little bit of a shortcut. So uh, I placed all of the ingredients in the blender and then I poured the mixture into the pan and then I just baked it and that's it. That's all I had to do. There was nothing else that had to be done to that. So a nice, um, starch to have on the table. Um, typically we have macaroni and cheese too, but I've been doing a lot of cooking this week and it's just been a really crazy week. So I thought, 
I'm not gonna do macaroni and cheese. We're gonna do something different and have corn souffle. Really yummy. Great side. And again, me, the non-traditionalist, I don't eat greens and cabbage and things like that. So I decided to do a little bit of a healthier spin on what would be the sides for a Southern Sunday supper. So instead, uh, we have some uh, grilled zucchini, grilled squash, uh, some grilled tomatoes, and some grilled um, red onions with a little bit of fresh basil sliced over top and a little bit of a olive oil drizzle. That is going to be the side for today. I know some of my family's gonna be like, what, where are the greens, where's the cabbage? But we're gonna have that today instead, nice and fresh and healthy. <laughs> Speaking of being healthy, we're also gonna have something that's not so healthy. I also decided to make a peach cobbler. Um, Dessert is a big deal to me, as I have said 15 million times on the show. But this is a simple peach cobbler. And again, even if you can't bake, you can make this. And I did some shortcuts today. What I did was I used canned peaches. And I know some Southern folks are clutching their pearls going, you made it with canned peaches? Sorry, Georgia folks. I don't have a peach tree where I can just pull the peaches from and make it. <laughs> make the pin. It's not quite peach season, at least up here anyway. Not quite yet. Um, so I used canned peaches. So I cheated a little bit. So I used canned peaches and um, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of brown sugar. I'm sorry, a little bit of, I'm sorry, there's some sugar. It's sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, a little bit of lemon juice. Mix that all together, put it at the bottom of the pan. And then I used a uh, um, refrigerated pie crust and just cut it in strips and put it on top crisscross because I didn't have the time again to bake any um, to make pie dough to make pie crust so we're gonna have this with butter pecan ice cream and vanilla ice cream that is going to be yummy I'm gonna reheat that that's gonna be nice and hot and delicious so this is what we're gonna have here. So we're gonna have the biscuits, which we'll see in a moment. We're gonna have some cornbread um, that I'm going to do in um, in uh, the Madeline the Madeline pan. So they'll be nice and pretty and look like little shells. And then we have our white rice. And like I said, we're gonna fill this out with some fried chicken and a salad. So it's kind of a southern-ish Sunday supper. So there you have it, everyone. I hope that you are spending some time with your family today having a delish Sunday supper and you're creating wonderful memories with your family.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We had our delicious Sunday supper. We all cannot wait. We were here in the studio going, ooh, we can't wait to get home so we can eat that dinner. Because all my family came in and said, where's the food? There's a video. Where's it? I'm like, it's at home. We're going to eat at home. So we're going to continue and have our own Sunday celebration. We're going to make our own soul food movie. Y'all remember that movie, Soul Food? Yeah. So here I am today with my lovely mother, Roxy Jones. Happy <laughs> mom, <Mama>, y'all. <laughs> As you all have heard me say on numerous occasions, my mom, my mom, she taught me, I learned. Uh, uh, uh. So here she is in living color, my mother. So, hi mom, welcome to the show. Hi Andy, thanks for having me. <laughs> of course, <laughs> we're so formal. <laughs> so mom, since we're doing the show and it's kind of like about, you know, uh, Southern Sunday supper and the South and different things like that. So I just kind of want since, you know, you taught me everything that I know. So I kind of want to talk about some of those things. I want to talk about like your memories of Sunday suppers, your favorite things to cook. Um, and then I'm going to throw in some bonus questions you don't know anything about. But you'll be able to answer them because she went to a black college. She always mentions that to me. I'm like, Mom, you're so smart. She's like, I went to a black college. So <laughs> anyway, y'all, she does really say that. You know you say that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. So, Mom, since we're talking about Sunday suppers and everything, I know I would love for you to share with the viewers the things that you have, you know, told me about as far as how important Sunday suppers were to you all when you grew up um, and how big of a role it played in your upbringing and all that good stuff and anything else you want to throw in there too but I definitely want you to talk about Sunday suppers for starters since that's what we are kind of talking about today and then we'll go on other things. Yeah Sunday suppers in the south <clears throat> was very important as Angie had said a little while ago because on Sundays there was always Sunday school with the with the family, not sending them on the bus, church bus. It wasn't a church bus to send them on, but it was always with my granddad and um, my grandmother and m maybe just the um, elders of our family. And um, after Sunday service, it was always at my grandmother on my mom's side or my grand mother on my dad's side. There was always Sunday dinner. And there were different dishes every Sunday because everybody loved to cook. And we had really good cooks in our family. The males too. Yeah. The males yeah. and the yeah, females. Yeah, seriously, the males too. Yeah. Yeah. And there was always homemade cake mm. and homemade ice cream. Not in the electric freezers, but the True. crank freezes wow. and everybody had to take turns that was fine because yeah. <laughs> you knew at the end you're gonna get yeah and most of the times i like the dash the part that has all the ice cream on after oh, it after you lift it out the yeah thing. Uh -huh. that was very very good but that was very important on sunday because everybody had worked during the week and sundays was our gathering time with our families we don't have that so much now i still try to do that even with the children being away here in D.C. and Maryland. Uh, we communicate on Sundays because um, after church, then there's Sunday dinner. If I'm not gone to another church, I play for, I'm a musician for two churches in the Auburn area in Alabama. But um, just growing up, period, in the South, we, had, we, we didn't know that we were poor uh, because we always had everything accessible to us. Mm -hmm. um, my granddad had two farms and there was always vegetables we had the cattle to have the meat the good bacon and the ham and no. all of that good stuff and there wasn't mm. too much grilling then the grilling that was done there was a pit dug in the ground and you wow. put some barbed wire over or that wheel grand fence over it, and your charcoal and all of that with the wood and smoked it all night long. Wow. Especially oh. around uh, uh, July 4th. Yeah. But then getting back to um, growing up in the South, yes, I went to uh, Black College, Alabama State. Woohoo! 
Hornets. Go Hornets. Go Hornets. And um, <clears throat> we always had family and friends over. Not just our family, but That's everybody the, shared. Yeah. You know, neighbors. You don't do that too much anymore now. Yeah. But um, it's and a everybody, lost thing. Yeah, it's a lost thing mm -hmm. now. But we're kind of getting back to it more so than you we were so? some years ago. Okay. More so, yeah. But um, also, there was always <clears throat> going back to my roots and the black community on Sundays. There was always the Sunday dinner of the Sunday supper, but in between or after the Sunday dinner, there was BTU, Baptist Training Union. After, after, after dinner? Di after dinner. That was 5.30 wow. on Sundays. Oh, wow. Yeah, you better and dinner not, was typically, supper was what time? Around, around 3.30, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes earlier than that with, you know, uh, other families. Mm -hmm. But I don't care where we went, we better be back for Baptist Training Union. And that's um, uh, we had Sunday school, mm -hmm. but at Baptist Training Union, it was a little more detailed mm -hmm. than Sunday school mm -hmm. because they were really training the youth to do the things that the deacons uh -huh. and the trustees uh -huh. back then would teach the young men, gotcha. and then the deaconess would teach the young women. Wow, that's definitely not something we yeah, do anymore so, that we yeah, that we need. Now. Yeah, so, uh, and then um, at an early age, Angie said 10, I think I was about 12 years old oh, when okay. I was a musician for my first church Sunday school, mm -hmm. Jerusalem Baptist Church. Well, all right, Jerusalem. And I was, I earned $2 a week. Wow. And that was a lot $2 of money. $2 a week. $2. <laughs> what does $2 buy? A soda. A soda, maybe, oh, now? Maybe. <laughs> wow. But, um. We had bubble, very, bubble gum. Very, maybe. very good um, days back in the early 50s, mm -hmm. 60s, on up. So tell me about some of the things that would be on the table. Let's get everybody's mouth watering. Oh, there was always some fried chicken. Always. Always some fried chicken, uh -huh. some roast beef with the gravy. Mm -hmm. You had the chicken mm -hmm. for today, but there was that roast beef. Mm -hmm. That had come from one of the cows that my granddad had slaughtered. Wow. Yeah, and we churned our own milk, made our own butter. Wow. All that back there. So most of the so most of the dishes on the food were homegrown. Mm -hmm. There was always fresh vegetables. And back then, everybody shared. Mm -hmm. If there was a hog mm -hmm. slaughtered, mm -hmm. everybody was going to get some meat in the neighborhood. Right. And, and, and when the cow, my granddad would sell cows. And every time he sold a cow, everybody got some, all the nieces and the, the grandchildren and the nieces and nephews, they got a little change there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very That's nice. when I started saving my money in the piggy bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I could go shopping back which, then. Which we know she loves to do. Right, Daddy? <laughs> my father's shaking his head. Yes, she does. <laughs> yeah. But those so, were fun days. Yeah, it sounds like it. I've always enjoyed hearing you tell those stories about that time, too, because it just seems like such an idyllic time. Like, I mean, I know everything wasn't perfect, I mean, in the 50s and 60s in the Deep South, mm -hmm. but it just sounds like, like you said, despite all of that, you all had a really good community, and you knew everyone. Everyone looked out for each other. I mean, my mm -hmm. mother said that, and my father said this, too, that they slept with the doors unlocked. My mother said she didn't start locking the door until she came here, right? Mm -hmm. right. That yeah. is like foreign to me. I'm like, I can't, like I do it like now it's just like automatic just to come in, you know, and lock the door, but they didn't have to do that. So that's crazy to me. So tell me mom, like I know, um, you know, like grandmother and um, Mama Cena, that's my mother's grandmother, maternal grandmother, my grandmother, Mama Cena, and then my great aunt. T and we called her on T. Her name was um, Ida May. But anyway, that they were, um, they molded and shaped you in the kitchen and taught you how to cook. So tell me, what are your first memories of what, were the, what was one of the first things you learned how to cook or bake? My mother was 
determined that I was going to make this banana pudding from scratch. She just knew I could make it. I guess she said, you've eaten enough, you should know how to make it, right? <laughs> so she had all the ingredients there, and I couldn't get that pudding, the lumps out of that pudding uh -huh. on top. I think uh -huh. I had the burner too high, you know. And every time I messed it up, I had to run around to the corner store and get some more milk. Oh, God. I, mm -hmm. But I got it right, though. Okay. Yeah, because I so, think the last time that I... I didn't know that, that I, banana pudding was one of the first things you learned. Yeah, it was one of the How first. How old were you? I was about 12. Oh, about the same time I was yeah, when about, I learned how to yeah, cook. Yeah, about okay. 12. Yeah, but that was the, the basic, you know, mm -hmm. of my learning how to cook. Mm -hmm. And then after that, mm -hmm. I was like, if I taste it, I could make it almost as well as, as, as my mother, or auntie, wow. made it. Mm -hmm. That's wow. how much I love to eat yeah. also. That was, that's a good segue into my next question. What's your favorite thing to bake, savory and sweet, and then what's your favorite thing to eat? Is it the same thing that you like to cook, or is it something different? Well, I cook so many things. You do. Um, I guess my favorite mm -hmm. is I. Uh, my favorite dessert mm -hmm. to was um, a three-layer coconut cake. Mm. To make or From to eat or both. Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> both. Okay. As a matter of fact, I have a picture of that. Not is my that cake, but the cake that we made. Remember. In green with the, belt with the cherries on with the, the top. cherries you, on top. It was like this, I'm serious. Like yeah, it was like used, it was like we, this high. Yeah. And I'm not used, talking about on the pedestal or anything. Like just the cake itself. It was like this high. Yeah. And we I had to grate the coconut. Yeah. There was yeah. no buying it in the bag. No, no in the can. Or the yeah, fresh yeah, she grated did it, coconut. Yeah, yeah, I mean I do fresh that grated cake. coconut. Okay. Favorite savory dish. Mm. We had a lot of Mm-hmm. Steaks, meat. Don't meat. Yeah, you do love meat. I do. That's where I, I get it from. Pork I love chops, meat. steaks, meat. <laughs> meat. You got it, Charles? Yeah. Plain and simple. Meat. Yeah, I might not have it on the plate right then, but it's not going to be too far away. Gotcha. Noted. Yeah, because when we go out to dinner sometimes with my friends in Auburn, and they say, I don't have to have any meat. I said, well, you don't. I don't have to have it right now, but it's not going to be too far away when I'm done with this. But I, I do Well, like already there. The, the meat is going to be the other thing. There. Okay. So what are your tips as far as entertaining? I would love to hear what your tips are. Because I've, give, give, I've given mine on several shows, but I'd love to hear what yours are. Well, I do have a pet peeve with... Oh, that'd be good. What's your pet peeve? Paper plates and forks and napkins. Everybody that. <laughs> That's mine too. I they say, like, oh, we could just use. No! No. Because I didn't grow up using paper plates mm -hmm. and napkins. Mm -hmm. There was Sunday dinner, there was always china. Mm -hmm. I, Angie has the china from, from Auntie. Yeah. And I had some of my mother's china that. The, uh, Greg had some. I shipped some to Greg when he was in Texas. <laughs> some of the china that we had back then and the silverware. But I kind of held on to those things, and I do collect it now. My house, our home, is not childproof. You have to come <laughs> Hello. in. Really? Seriously? No, it's not. It's not. You just come in and just... Walk very gingerly. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's... But I don't have a problem with that because... Um, if somebody broke something, if it's out in the way, it must supposed to have been broken. You know, uh, I have so much. Yeah, but I, I do use it. I do. I do use it. She does. Yeah, but my husband will use paper plates. We do have some in the house, but I don't <laughs> use them. Yeah, yeah, that's a pet peeve. I don't like paper yeah. plates. Y'all have heard me. The only reason I had paper plates last week is because we were talking about Memorial Day. It would have looked weird had I had China. Other than that, no can do. We don't do paper. So, Mom, we're going to end with one last question. So, this is Music Month, and you, Black Music Month, and you are a musician, and you basically play gospel. Yes. So, I would like to know 
who your favorite gospel artist is, and then who your favorite non-gospel or like your favorite secular artist too. We got to talk about music a little bit because that's also a big a big part of who she is too. My favorite gospel artist is uh, Thomas D Thomas Dorsey. Really, mm -hmm. Amazing Grace. Did he write Amazing Grace? Amazing Grace, and um, here's a couple of them that's. Um, Precious Lord. That's what he. Yes, that's what he wrote. Precious yeah, Lord. yeah, that is pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why yeah, those, are my, those, are, those are my favorites. Those are your favorites. Okay, yeah. so favorite like R&B or soul group? Mm, I like The Temptations. Mm -hmm. mm, Marvin Gaye. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few. Yeah, so you like, like the, the Motown big, sound. The Motown sound. Because that's what you grew up they, on. Yeah, we, yeah, grew up on the Motown sound. Mm -hmm. But growing up, we had to listen to those blues that your dad, the you know, yeah. Because you know, back in the day, they That's what, yeah they played that right all genres of music yeah. really in a black home right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, our time is up, so, Mom. Thank you for being my special guest today. Thank you for inviting me, my only daughter. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, everyone, that is going to wrap up today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. We're about to get, we're about to boogie out of here. I don't have anything to do. We're going to grab this tablecloth. We're going to grab these flowers, and we are out of here because we're going home to eat all that food. Sorry. <laughs> but I will be posting um, the biscuits uh, on uh, my Instagram page. So check me out at at Fabula Living to check out the recipe and the finished result of the drop biscuits. And I'll probably put a couple of pics on with um, our, you know, um, gathering this evening too. So definitely check that out. Definitely don't forget to tune in next week as we're going to really kick off Black Music Month with uh, gospel artist Clifton Ross III. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Blessings. <laughs>